Hi, I'm Joe Lynch from the Somerville Media Center, and joining me on set today are two Somerville High School students who are very much in favor of a recent initiative in Somerville to allow 16-year-olds to vote in our municipal elections. Joining me today are Rui Teixeira and Jaden St. Hilaire. Welcome to Greater Somerville. Thank you. You guys, you're, no, you're a regular hand here at Somerville Media Center. And Jaden, I've seen your face before. Hi. You both participate in the um, Youth Empowerment Program. Yep. yep. Yeah. Teen Empowerment. Teen yeah. Empowerment. Teen Empowerment. So welcome to the hot set. You know, we're going to start the discussion, and it's a regular discussion. Sometimes I'm going to play the bad guy. Sometimes I'm going to play the good guy. But I'm going to open up the show and let both of you tell the Somerville public why you think it's a good idea that 16-year-olds should be allowed to vote in municipal elections. Why don't we start with Rui. Rui has no problem speaking on set. He loves it. Uh, well, you know, I think that, you know, youth, they are part of the population. And by opening up the ability to vote to 16-year-olds and 17-year-olds, you give more people the chance to express their opinion, to express their views and values. So, and I think if we don't allow them that uh, right, then you're missing out on a lot of viewpoints. Jaden? I would also have to, also have to like agree with what Rui said, because like I feel like if you don't like allow like a certain like certain people to like have their voices heard, then oftentimes like I feel like they become like the minority. And then once their like voices can't get like heard, they can't like really do anything to like change their circumstances. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I do know what you mean because I was 16 once <laughs> and I kind of felt like I was ignored whatever my opinions were. But now that I've been voting all these years, um, let me start off asking a couple of adversarial questions. How's that? Why, under the Constitution, you cannot vote? Yes, in federal law we can't vote. Right. In state law, know of any states that allow 16-year-olds to vote in state elections? Um, I can't off the top of my head. Me neither. How about municipalities? Any cities, towns that you know of? Not a trick question, there are. There are municipalities across the United States who have petitioned the state government to say, we believe that 16 year olds are mature enough, they're informed enough, and they should have a say about the place that they live in. So that's really what you folks are trying to do, right? And you're not alone. There are a bunch of you at the high school and across you know, the 16 year old spectrum that says we should be able to vote. So let's talk a little bit more about why 16-year-olds um, are at the point. What are the topics, what are the hot issues that 16-year-olds are focused on that you think old fogies like me are not? You know, I think we, I think uh, our generation is focusing a lot on kind of uh, climate change and like ecological problems because that's going to be the world we inherit, you know. And so if the world is being messed up now, we're going to be the generation that has to, you know, change that to clean that up. Do you th so is it a general feeling that the generation that's in politics today or the folks that are in charge, quote unquote, they're not doing enough? Yeah, I, I definitely would like have to like agree with that statement because like sometimes I feel like when um, when like people in power make a decision, like sometimes they feel like they're just like mostly doing it to like benefit themselves and not like the actual like group of people who needs help. So laws are being propagated and enacted for a selfish reason. They're doing it for their own reasons yeah. instead of thinking about you guys who are coming up behind them. Yeah. Because like I feel like a lot of people like a lot of people come in and they like try to have their voice heard, but like. I feel like a lot of the times that like they sort of just like get ignored and like, get shoved under the rug and like people just like try to get rid of them. So how many times have you have either one of you heard, oh they were only sixteen. They don't know what they're talking about. A lot. A lot. Yeah? Yeah. Any any basis to that? You think there's any basis at all? 
Well, I mean, they are, you know, people, 16 year olds are still learning, they're still developing their personality and their political values, but that stuff can, but your political values can change and they can change later into life. Hmm. Based on like your circumstances and stuff. What, what are some of the hot topics here in Somerville that you would, so if I give you a topic, tell me which way you'd vote. How's that? All right, so you know that there's this whole thing about um, affordable housing here in the city. You both live in the city. You both attend Somerville High School. You've got a brand new high school being built, right? Yeah, right. Affordable housing and the high school, ex the expense of building that high school. Do you see a connection between those two? Is there any kind of connection, mainly from a financial aspect? Yeah, I think so. I think there's probably a lot more money being diverted into the high school than into affordable housing. Yeah, I have to agree with that. What's the cost of your new high school? Like, um, I can't remember the price. It's, it's going to be, you know, they're tearing the whole thing down, rebuilding it, so it's going to be very expensive. And yeah. I know it, it, it was so expensive they had to, wasn't it on the uh, state ballot? Uh, no, I don't think it's on the state ballot. Wait. They have to go to the state. Yes, it, right. was, it was one of the questions. It was an override. Yeah. Right. To allow the city to bond a certain amount of money. Bonding is nothing more than borrowing in my, yeah. in my vernacular. But they had to go to the state. They had to say, our city wants us to do this new high school. We need to bond all this money for it. The state came back and the state kicks in some money. But who ultimately pays the bulk of that? Taxpayers. Taxpayers. So if I were to give you a choice and say, do you guys who have a vested interest in a new high school want the money for a new high school or do you want money for affordable housing? How would you have voted? Ooh, that, that's hard because like, I see like for like both sides, like if we have like a lot of money for a high school, we can get like a better education, but the downside of that is like the price for a living is going to raise up and people who lived here for an extremely long time won't be able to live here anymore because of that. And which to me is sort of like sad that they won't be able to. But at the same time, it's like also, but also at the same time for like the high school, it really like benefits the students. So I, for me, I'm not like sure how would I would vote on that. I would have to like be very methodical about like about making my decision before I make it. I'm glad you said it because there are a lot of voters my age who just walk in. They don't know what the issue is, maybe a ballot question or who the candidates are that you're voting for. They might just vote for the incumbent and they're not looking at all the issues or thinking about all of the consequences of how they vote. So great answer. All answers are great. Sometimes I disagree with them, but that's a great answer. You have to think hard when you're voting. Voting is not easy. Voting sometimes gets very highly charged. It gets emotional. People are on one side, people are on the other side. Knowing the both of you, how engaged you are with social issues, you see what's happened to the country. The country is totally polarized. It's 50% 50, 50 of the people think one way, 50% of the people think the other way. And what, what happens? Everybody gets mad at each other. But. So let's go back to voting again. 16 year olds. So I'm going to play devil's advocate with Rui for a minute. All right. You can't serve in the military yet. Why should you be voting on military issues? Well, I mean, there's many people who don't serve in the military who still vote anyway. There you go. There you go. Jaden, what do you think of that? I'd also have to agree with what Rui said, and also just because like you're not in the military, right, doesn't mean that you don't know somebody in your life who doesn't who um, goes to the military, and then like sometimes when they come back home, like they come back home like differently. So I would think I would say probably like they should be able to vote, seeing like how it like affects their loved ones. So it could have been a dad or a mom, yeah. could have been a brother or a sister, it could have been an aunt or an uncle and you see the effects of, especially when people have to go into combat zones yeah. or into war, you see the effects of that. So you, you would be more inclined to think more thoughtfully about yeah. a president who, says, who rattles the saber and says, let's go to war on everything. 
Got it? Yeah. Got it. Um, what are the other hot issues here in Somerville? I switched kind of back and forth there, but some of the other issues that you're concerned about and you want to be able to vote on. I think one that everybody is kind of thinking about and it kind of goes back to affordable housing is kind of gentrification. Um, and, you know, the fact that everything is becoming more expensive uh, because, you know, there's more... Uh, business businesses and you know the high school that's part of that which yes it's making the community a kind of a nicer place to live but at the same time the people who have lived here for generations or years they can no longer afford to live here because it's becoming too expensive does nicer always mean a better community no, no. like does nicer always mean a richer community no, no. like for instance, like let's say private schools, like I look, hear like from a lot of kids, like oh, like they're really nice, and then I hear from like a bunch of other kids saying like oh, like the like the teachers don't like really care, and like the students are doing like all these like crazy things. So it's not like always better when like things become nice. Sometimes they can just become like worse if not taken care of properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of people in the community are not going to be able to benefit, benefit from the community becoming nicer, so. Yeah. Who, who are those people, really? Well, you know, uh, local business owners, you know, peop, uh, you know, kind of mom and pop shops, if you will, that have been here for a while, you know, uh, immigrants who recently came here, uh, like I said, people who have been here for generations, you know just most people in the community. So, not a trick question, but let me ask you both. Is this becoming a city of the rich and the poor? I would say so. Yeah. You can see some very clear lines. Um, if you go to West Somerville and East Somerville, it's almost like they're two different cities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even if, if you go down Winter Hill, which is kind of in the process of being gentrified, it's very clear which is which. You have these, these older houses, and then you have these brand new condos. So you can actually see the wealth that's coming into Somerville. Yeah. How would you do this if um, now we give you the vote? Somerville is successful. You guys, first, you guys are successful in convincing our city council to go ahead with this, send it into the state house, convincing our elected state reps to champion your cause at the state house, and the representatives say, you know what, great idea, let Somerville do this. What would be your first, how are you gonna position yourselves to be leaders within that 16-year-old community to vote? Rui, you're a little young yet. Yeah. Next year, you're going to be organizing. I can just feel it. You're organizing, and you're already of age. You're already 17, so you can vote next year. So here we have somebody who can't vote for another couple of years and somebody who's going to vote in a year. How are you going to organize? You've identified some of the problems that we've got in a city that's growing, in a city that is no longer low income. We still have a lot of low income people here. But as Rui says, they're being pushed out because of the wealth that's coming in. What are, what are the first things you guys are gonna think about if you get the vote at 16? Oh, so I would probably have to like think about um, like, how, like how my vote is gonna like affect everybody because like one vote can just like change a lot. So like you have to like really like evaluate the pros and cons before voting. And I would probably like tell people who are like about to vote, like always think of the pros and cons because you may like view something as a pro, but it could like have a very like strong con. So consequences. Yeah. Think about the consequences before you vote. Rui, how about you? Uh, kind of a big issue, I would say, is affordable housing and, you know, being able to keep people who have been here here. And how do you do that when you're voting? Uh, well, uh, first it would need to be proposed, or you could vote against, kind of, you could vote against things that would, you know, that, that would reduce, or, 
Okay. So you could vote against things that were put into place to kind of give developers more land, more mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. So you could vote against that. And and how do you see that? How do you see that coming across from candidates? So let me give you a candidate statement. I'm all for big business. I'm all for more commercial development. I'm all for developers coming in and making our city a shining city on the hill. Would you vote for that guy? How about the guy that comes in and says, we need a balance between commercial development coming into the city, because that generates taxes, so we can build a new high school, or and we need to protect the working class that are in the city. You like that message? Yeah. yeah. How about the message of, we don't want any more development in here. We don't want anybody taking up any more space. We don't want 25-story skyscrapers in Union Square because it destroys what we have today and it pushes people out. There's your tough choice. Yeah. I mean, that one, personally, I kind of agree with that. But I mean, maybe there shouldn't be a full cease on development. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, the high school's in three buildings, so development just stopped altogether for a second to leave mm -hmm. several high schools. So what do you think I'm trying to drive at with this, this part of it? Because you said the magic word when we were talking about it. Oh, you mean, um, let me see, methodical? Methodical and balanced. Voters, I take voting very, very seriously. I haven't missed, I think I missed one special election in the city of Somerville in all the years I've been voting. Because I think voting is a right, and I think it is also a privilege. It's a privilege that's granted to us under our Constitution. And whenever I get a privilege, I try to take advantage of that. Not in a way that is bad, but you're saying to me, you get access to your, um, you get access to your government, and a lot of people across the globe don't have that. They don't have access to their government. We can vote you in, we can vote you out. And I think that's the key, what, what 16 year olds are really trying to say is that we have a voice. We have a voice. We're not the kids of 30 years ago, 25 years ago. We're highly intelligent. We read a lot. We understand politics. We look at it from both sides. But the word that you used was balance. Voting is hard and voting has to be balanced. Taking it, there are hardliners on both sides, right? Hardliners on both sides. Extremists, extremists. I always think there's a song you guys won't recognize, but the lines go, clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am stuck in the middle with you. Ooh, that was the, a nice line. the vast majority of folks are in the middle. They're just, they're trying to survive. They're trying to figure it out. And then you have the hardliners on both sides. That's why I was asking, you know, that difficult balance there, how do you vote? Do you vote along party lines? Are you, that's a question I wanted to ask you. So you get the vote at 16. You, as a voter, a registered voter in the city of Somerville, you go up and you register at the elections office. Any inclination as to, I'm not going to hold you to it, and if you don't want to answer it, any inclination as to how you're going to register? Democrat, Republican, unenrolled, independent, Green Party, Pirate Party, I don't know. I mean, there's... Um, I would say I would probably do like independent because I Somerville is an overwhelmingly democratic city, and a lot of this do a lot of my generation are Demo Democrats. But I also have some problems with the Democratic Party. I think that they're not they don't take action enough in certain um, in certain um, aspects. Yeah, and Jane? I would also have to like agree with what Rui said. Like, I know like for like um a lot of like the people here, they're very like democratic. But like, I also like seeing stuff from like the Democratic Party that I don't like sometimes. And like, like seeing like both sides like of the two parties sometimes can just like be so exhausting. So I probably go with what Rui. <laughs> Politics is exhausting, Jaden. 
I mean, really, you've seen some of the political stuff that we do down here. It is exhausting. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting that you're going to kind of look at, but neither one of you said Republican. Oh. You're just shaking your head. Going, you don't even want to spend any time on that one. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think the party system needs to be shaken up a lot in this country? Oh, definitely. Yeah. So that kind of is dictating why you would, you would be an independent voter. You don't want to be part of either party. Would it surprise you to know that 52% of the voters in this city are unenrolled? They're not part of either party. And that's a slow decline that's been happening. We were once the bedrock of Democrats. I think at one point it was probably almost 80% of the voters in this city were registered Democrats. Now it's slid below 50%. And I think it speaks volumes about how voters, especially younger voters, are looking at politics. Being part of the party politics just isn't cutting it anymore. Yeah. Are, you, are you thinking about forming your own party? I the, mean... The Rui Teixeira party? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think so. No? No. How about politics? Are either one of you thinking about going into politics? Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, for me, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> Probably, uh, uh, this is scary. Yeah, this is hard. <laughs> Balanced. <laughs> yeah, all the words you would do using to describe voting and how you vote also applies to whether or not you would go into politics. How about activism? I think Rui, Rui's already got that activist bug, you know. So <laughs> yeah, activism. I think would I definitely get into that for the right causes. You know. So more so than being an elected official. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, when, it's, when you're an activist, it's not just you. You don't stand alone. You know, there's people from your community. There's people um, who just share similar ideals, and they can all come together. Mm. We have some meetings coming up in the city talking about 16-year-old voters. You guys going? I would like to, yeah. Yeah? Definitely. I would love to go. Yeah. There's, um, check out the websites. I know I saw a couple of things on Facebook. I think one of them is this week. And it's talking about 16-year-old voters. How about at the high school? Is there a movement at the high school itself with a group that's formed and trying to push this? I'm not sure if there's exactly one group. I know that you know, a, lot of, a lot of individual people uh, would like to see this, and I know there's a lot of groups that also have this ideal, but aren't aren't solely there um, to push this. Mm. Yeah. Let me give you a little secret about politics. If you want something bad enough, get a bunch of people to join you. So, yeah. this has been a great conversation. I know it's not the end. The city council is taking it under consideration. Um, hopefully, they will vote soon. They get the right to vote. So yeah. Why shouldn't you guys get the right to vote? They will vote on that initiative, and it goes up to Beacon Hill. So best wishes to both of you. Thank you. Rui Teixeira and Jaden St. Hilaire, thanks Thank for you. joining me down here at the Media Center. I wish you both luck. Thank you. There's our episode about Give Us the Vote at 16. I'm Joe Lynch for the Somerville Media Center. My guests have been Rui Teixeira and Jaden St. Hilaire. See you next time. Be safe. Stay informed.